Okay. Since its debut on November 2022, ChatGPT has taken the world by storm. It seems like the world will never be the same again. Every one of us can feel the astonishing speed of AI transformation. Hi, I'm Lisa. This is Threshold X, a segment that gives you a taste of the future before it actually happens. Let's take a look at how AI has become what it is today and how close it is to your imagination. Yes, AI has progressed tremendously and has achieved things that we previously would have taken as impossible. It's all in the news, and the related topic goes viral on social media, like GPT tried to lure a human into helping it jailbreak, or it has a mind as mature as a 12-year-old and it quickly grew to the level of an adult in just a few weeks. But we are all worried that our jobs might be replaced by AI. I mean, AI system can now create realistic images that could in theory replace fashion models and photographers. And it can even create short videos from just a few lines of cues. It's crazy how things are changing. ChatGPT and Copilot have made things challenging for junior accountants, entry-level lawyers and average programmers by taking over some of their work. And now even blue collar jobs aren't safe, with ChatGPT controlling robots for manual tasks, what's next? Well, that's going to be one of our future video. Today, we are going to start with how we got here in the first place. In the pre-ChatGPT era, I believe many of us have had frustrating experience of talking to chatbots, which are not very clever. In many cases, they are not very helpful in any kind of way. Hey Siri! This is for you. I'm a little hungry. Uh, can you find me a restaurant that serves grilled cheese? Okay, I will play Alicia Keys. Are you deaf? He said grilled cheese. Well, a conventional chatbot is typically built using a rule-based or a retrieval-based approach. In a rule-based chatbot, the developer creates a set of rules that the chatbot follows to respond to user input. In the retrieval-based chatbot, the developer trains the chatbot using a large amount of text data and uses a machine learning algorithm to match user input to the most appropriate response. In contrast, ChatGPT is a large language model trained using a deep learning algorithm called Transformer Architecture. It was trained on a massive dataset of text from the internet, so it has a lot of knowledge about many topics and can generate human-like responses to a wide range of inputs. Unlike conventional chatbots, it doesn't rely on predefined rules or a fixed set of responses. Instead, it uses its knowledge of the natural language and a wide range of topics to generate responses on the spot based on what you say. Another critical difference between ChatGPT and conventional chatbot is that it is designed to be more flexible and adaptable. While a traditional chatbot is typically limited to a specific set of domains, ChatGPT can respond to various inputs and adapt to new topics and contexts. It can also learn from new inputs and improve its responses over time, making it a more effective conversational agent. We can use ChatGPT to illustrate the essential feature of the current generation of AI. There are three key points. First, for whatever purpose they are used for, whether it is to generate images or text or make decisions, they are all based on transformer architecture. Second, there are large models trained in advance. Third, they can improve themselves with the input and answers, also known as reinforcement learning. Let's start with the transformer algorithm. In 2017, researchers at Google proposed Transformer as an alternative to the widely used algorithm at the time, the Recurrent Neural Network, or RNNs. RNNs are a class of neural network designed to deal with information that follows a particular order, such as text. They work by processing one input at a time and keep a memory of what it has seen so far. This memory is then used to make predictions or generate text. RNNs are efficient for language modeling, machine translation, and speech recognition. The weakness of RNN is apparent. They are limited to process one input at a time, which is quite slow. And more importantly, because RNNs can only maintain a short memory, capturing long-term dependence in the input is difficult. By long-term dependence, I mean the relationship between words in a sentence that are separated by a long distance. For example, in the sentence, I put the book back on the shelf because it was too heavy. The word it refers to the book at the beginning of the sentence. 
There's an example of a long-term dependency because the meaning of the word it depends on the context established by the word book. They are important to form the meaning of the sentence. That's where transformer comes in. It can look at the entire sentence all at once and figure out which parts are most important. This makes make it easier to handle long-term dependencies and understand its context. The transformer uses self-attention mechanism to process input data. The network focuses on different parts of the input data at different times, like a spotlight that shines on different parts of the information at different times. This spotlight assigns weights or importance scores to each part of the information based on its relevance to other parts of the data. For instance, if you want to translate a sentence from English to French, the transformer will break down the English sentence into individual words and assign weights based on their relevance to the other words in the sentence. These weights help it determine which words are the most important for generating the French translation. This unique architecture makes it a great choice for jobs that involve natural language processing. All right, so much for transformer. Now let's move on to the second feature of ChatGPT and others alike. They belong to the category of pre-trained models which represent a paradigm shift from what we now call classic machine learning in which the specific task needed to be defined first and then the engineer would process to put together the dataset for its training. Big models such as GPT are done the other way around, it's the generative pre-trained transformer. The model is trained first and then the task comes later when user makes requests. This gave the model flexibility and the potential to handle various tasks. It is how we get our experience of having a conversation with ChatGPT. Another interesting thing about ChatGPT is that it can learn really quickly. For example, if you ask, what is the capital of Burkina Faso? And it said, I am not sure. Then if you tell it that's not very helpful, it will use that feedback to improve, like updating its knowledge base to include information about the capital of Burkina Faso so that the next time someone asks the exact question, it can provide a more accurate response. It's like teaching a dog a new trick and using treats as the reward to encourage the dog to perform a particular behavior. With ChatGPT, instead of treats, it uses reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF because sometimes it is hard to define what is a good trick and that's where the human feedback comes in. When training a language model using RLHF, it is not always easy to determine what counts as a good response that matches people's want. So instead of relying on an objective reward signal, humans evaluate generated responses to provide feedback on what they like or didn't like about them. This feedback is then used to adjust the model's behavior and improve its ability to generate better responses. Not every big model rely on humans for feedback. Claude, another large language model built by Google-based startup Anthropic, uses AI to give feedback instead of people. But they also keep humans in the loop. Engineers and scientists and Anthropic write a set of principles and rules, which they call a constitution, to guide the feedback by AI. All this feedback can help large models like ChatGPT or Claude, which uses billions of parameters to improve every moment. They eventually surprise their creators with new abilities, such as the chain of thought. That is the ability to break a problem down into a series of intermediate reasoning steps. It has significantly improved the ability of LLMs to perform complex reasoning. Increasingly, these advances are both exciting and overwhelming, and it's important to think how humans fit into the future of work and society. So far, we have seen development mainly from Silicon Valley in the US. Meanwhile, in the same period, an ocean across Chinese scientists didn't sit on their hands. Of course, they're up to something. In the next video, I will introduce some of the most exciting breakthroughs of AI in China. See you then.